The Queen is ill. Long live the King, Republic, which is it to be? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. This morning, we I have heard from two different sources that Queen Elizabeth II is now under what they call medical supervision, which means the Queen is under the constant care of her physicians. This is the most serious health bulletin yet about this 96-year-old lady. If she is about to depart this mortal coil, what does that mean for the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth of Nations, and the world? Or will the United Kingdom become a United Republic? Before I speculate on an answer to that question, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, including this t-shirt that I have chosen for today. It depicts an eagle, which is our symbol, and this caption, Eagles fly alone. Pigeons need a flock. Now, while I'm on the subject, if you like what you are about to hear, you can like this video. There's a thumbs up icon for that. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new video. In fact, do you see the latest icon, the heart shape with the US dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do. All right. What? do we know about the Queen and how she's doing? My information comes from Just the News and the Washington Post. The Post published their story at 8.07 a.m. Eastern Time and updated it uh, at 9.05 a.m., which is 2.05 p.m. British Summer Time or 1.05 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, also known as Coordinated Universal Time. The Post also gives the greatest detail, including these items. On Tuesday, the Queen did accept Prime Minister Boris Johnson's resignation and formally ordered his successor, Liz Truss, to form a government. The Queen canceled a meeting of her Privy Council yesterday on medical advice to rest, and she is resting at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, which she owns privately. The following members of the royal family are either in Scotland now or are en route. His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. Now, no word yet on the whereabouts of the Duchess of Cornwall, also formerly known as uh, Camilla Parker Bowles. Their Royal Highnesses Princes Andrew and Edward and Princess Anne. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, formerly known as their Royal Highnesses Prince and Princess Henry of Wales, and His Royal Highness the Duke of Cambridge, known as Prince William of Wales. The Duchess of Cambridge will stay at Windsor Castle to see her children off as they start school. Elizabeth II, at 96, is third in a series of very long-reigning queens of England and second of two long-reigning queens of the United Kingdom. Recently, she celebrated her Platinum Jubilee, which means she has sat on her throne for 70 years. That makes her the longest reigning monarch in the history of the United Kingdom or any part of it. Likewise, Prince Charles has been in waiting longer than any other heir to the throne. Now, I said back then that the Platinum Jubilee might be the Queen's last hurrah. This morning's announcement makes that go double. And before I go any further, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're uh, uh, working harder for your money just to get by? You're not alone fluctuating economy, employment issues, and recent uh, changes in unexpected life changes have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines can help. 
by connecting you with thousands of other members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Now, maybe you just want to collect rare and unique coins. Or, if you're looking for business opportunities, this company provides some really good ones. Either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, now then, as it happens, the Prince of Wales has stood in for the Queen twice to open Parliament in May and to open the Commonwealth Games in August. Now, the Post also says that he stood in for the Queen at last year's 26 Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, known as COP26. In fact, never before had the Queen attended that conference, but she had planned to attend it in August of last year, and then bowed out in October and sent, her, sent the Prince in her place. Significantly, she spent one night in hospital that autumn, but no one knew anything about it until the sun broke the story. According to the Post, the Queen has in fact been planning for her own succession for some time. All indications suggest that she wants her son Charles to succeed her. That would explain his standing in for her to open Parliament and the Commonwealth Games. Now, it could explain his replacement of her at uh, COP26, but <laughs> climate change has always been his baby anyway. More significantly, the Queen let everyone know, uh, know at her Platinum Jubilee that when, not if, her son succeeds her, she would have the Duchess of Cornwall addressed as Queen Consort. Now that is one concession that neither King George V nor Parliament was willing to make to Wallace Simpson when Prince Edward wanted to marry her, which of course is why Prince Edward, as King Edward VIII, abdicated. For the Queen to concede that now means that uh, that her son succeeding her as king is a done deal. The only thing not done is what he will call himself. Charles III? George VII? It's up to him. After all, Edward VIII's brother called himself George VI and not King Albert. But Republican sentiment does have a voice. As recently as August 22nd of this year, the group calling itself Republican Cam Republic Campaign or simply Republic issued a blistering press release about the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge acquiring a fourth expensive home at British taxpayer expense and also when housing is getting ever more expensive in Great Britain. Republic Campaign makes no bones about its opposition to the monarchy in principle and in practice. I have links in the description not only to the Republic Campaign website, but also to two YouTube videos, one short and one long, explaining their position. The head of Republic explains why the monarchy must go in 59 seconds. Then he has a documentary about the Prince of Wales, saying he manages the Duchy of Cornwall unfairly and inconsiderately and shouldn't lobby the government. In fact, the comments on that documentary really castigate the prince for being an explicitly political prince and for high-handed dealings with his neighbors. The Republic also, the Republic also discusses what will change and hints that an elected president would summon heads of majorities in parliament to form governments, same as the elected president of Israel summons heads of majorities in the Knesset to form governments. The big change, they say, will be that the head of state won't show political, uh, won't skew political balances in the government's favor. What that will actually mean in day-to-day -day practice, Republic won't say. <laughs> There's very few people really know. But their proposed independent neutral head of state would also be subject to removal from office. Parliament would have to design an impeachment proceeding. All Crown-owned residences, including Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle, would revert to the people. 
The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge would pursue independent careers the way the Sussexes do. Now, given the state of the Queen's health, this is a developing story, so I ask you to stay tuned. Link in the description of the article, to the story in Just the News, to the Republic campaign site, to those two videos they made advocating for their position, and to conservative news and views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to OurSilverLines.com, as I also mentioned. You know by already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link a link to my coverage of the Platinum Jubilee, and links to those two videos from the Republic campaign. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.